Have regard, O Lord, to thy covenant, and forsake not to the end the souls of thy poor. Arise, O Lord, and judge thy cause. Remember the reproach of thy servants. Words taken from today's gradual in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In early June of 1876, Chief Sitting Bull, Sioux Tribe, wondering whether to stand his ground against the U.S. Calvary led by General Custer or to seek refuge elsewhere, sought answers to his questions in by undergoing a Sundance ceremony. In this diabolical ritual, among other things, the chief fasted severely and had a hundred tiny pieces of flesh removed from his arms. It was all cut up. He then received a vision of soldiers standing upside down with no ears. He told his people that no ears meant the white man had no intentions in honoring the treaties. Standing upside down symbolized that the soldiers would fall in defeat. Encouraged by this vision, three weeks later at the Battle of the Little Bighorn, the Indians wiped out prideful and arrogant and impure General Custer and his army with minimal casualties on their side. In ancient Israel, under the evil king Achab and his witch of a queen Jezebel, Saint Elias, sometimes called Elijah, faced down the 450 false prophets of Baal on Mount Carmel. There were actually 400 more prophets of the groves there too, 850 in all against one man. Answers to questions were sought, such as who among them worshipped the true God? In this historic mountain duel, the prophets of Jezebel went first in seeking answers from their demons. Similar to Sitting Bull, they gashed themselves to draw blood and danced upon their animal sacrifice. The scriptures say they cried with a loud voice and cut themselves after their manner with knives and lancets till they were all covered with blood. God withdrew the permissions of the devil to help these false prophets. And so there was nothing but silence. Scripture says, And after midday was passed, and while they were prophesying, the time was come to offer sacrifice, and there was no voice heard, nor did anyone answer, nor regard them as they prayed. Meanwhile, the sacrifice and prayer of St. Elias was answered with stupendous an astonishing power, with fire descending out of heaven to devour the offering. St. Elias prayed thus, Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that this people may learn that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart again. Then the scripture says, The fire of the Lord fell and consumed the holocaust, and the wood, and the stones, and the dust, and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw this, they fell on their faces, and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Obvious to everyone present, the false prophets were indeed proven to be false and were slain as enemies of the realm. Now, over the last four Sundays, we've been reflecting on the Holy Mass. Please allow me to continue today with one last installment on this series. Among other things, so far we've learned how the Holy Mass is the representation, the making present again of the perfect prayer of His Majesty, Christ our Lord and King, His perfect prayer on the cross. It is the moment when His prayers and offerings had the most pleasing aspect to God the Father. And that's why they're perfect. Sacrifice and love go hand in hand. Perfect love produces perfect sacrifice, which produces perfect prayer. It is so perfect, so complete, that it simply cannot be repeated or ever done over again. 
It can only be represented, made present again. And that's what the Mass does. It makes it present for us. Wow. Now this means that the best worship, the very best worship we can offer to God is none other than the Holy Mass. It is the highest level of praise, adoration, thanksgiving, petition, and atonement we can offer. And speaking of thanksgiving, think of today's Holy Gospel. The need to give thanks was shown in the ten lepers that were healed and only one came back. How many people today, when something good happens to them or their prayers are answered, they run to Mass, get on their knees, and praise God and thank Him for all that's happened to them? Instead, do I have to go to Mass? Once a week's enough, right? We don't run to Mass to give thanks to God. This is what it's for. In any case, the fathers teach us the only reason sacrifices of the Old Testament times, like that of St. Elias on Mount Carmel, the only reason these worked was simply because they were prefigurements of this one true sacrifice. They were foreshadowings. It was their connection to Calvary that gave them power. The more connected, the more power. Elias must have been very closely connected. The same is true of us. The more we unite ourselves with our dear Lord in the Mass, the more we can overcome this world, such that it will fall down and say, the Lord, He is God. If we have the faith like an Elias. Now, in philosophy and theology, we oftentimes learn about something we're interested in by looking at its opposite. This is the so-called via negativa the negative way. To learn more about the incredible reality of the Holy Mass, we can take the via negativa. We can consider what is its most opposite, which is arguably the so-called Black Mass of the Satanists. Now tomorrow, on the Feast of the Assumption, sad to say, in Oklahoma City, there is a Black Mass scheduled, public Black Mass scheduled, to be offered in a public building. Why is this happening? What does it mean? And what is going on here? And just what is a Black Mass anyway? To answer these questions, let us go back to the third temptation of Christ in the desert, where the devil insisted that our Lord and Savior bow down and worship Him in order to gain the whole world. That was the third temptation of Christ. Clearly from this, we see how the devil wants to be worshipped and he wants to be worshipped as if he were God. So however God's worshipped, that's how he wants to be worshipped. How is God best worshipped? Well, we've determined that. We've seen it is none other than the Holy Mass. It's the highest level of worship. Now Satan apes this reality by having his own form of Mass offered. And this is the so-called Black Mass. Now, what does this say about the Catholic Mass? We have the real thing. <laughs> That's what it's saying. The Black Mass is actually pointing on a big finger. Guess what? The Catholic Mass is where it's at. The devil takes a chance when he has a Black Mass said publicly like this. But he must have a lot of arrogance and pride to think he can get away with it now. In other words, he's got a lot of followers. Anyway, the devil knows that the Catholic Mass is the real thing. He's not making a parody, a mockery of the various rituals of other religions, the Muslims, or even the Protestants. No, he wants a black Mass to fulfill the third temptation of Christ. What is needed for Satan's so-called black Mass to be most effective? most pleasing to him. Well, among other things, a consecrated host stolen from our altar or our tabernacles. Or even better, they need their own validly ordained priest. God forbid. Sad to say, this has happened and is still happening probably. It incurs an automatic excommunication reserved to the Pope. 
called graviora delicta. Here's an example from the Code of Canon Law. Throwing away the consecrated species or for a sacrilegious purpose, taking them away or keeping them. Now, why are these Satanists coming to our churches to steal our hosts? They have to come to the Catholic Church and not just the traditional ones, folks. They know where the valid hosts are. They can feel them. They know that this is it. They're coming here because this is the real thing. There have been many hosts and even whole tabernacles stolen in recent years. Why would they want one of our priests to sin in such a grave manner? It's because we have the real thing. Our priests have true sacramental power to consecrate. And the devil and his followers know it. And that means it's very good, very good to be Catholic. We're in the right place. The devil's pointing out that fact. Via negativa. Now, as for the Black Mass itself, it seems there is quite a variety. Unless I'm mistaken, the one planned at the Civic Center in Oklahoma City tomorrow, hope it fails, is that of the Satanist Anton LaVey of American fame. He's from San Francisco. Are you surprised? Yet each of them, of these black masses, is essentially some ritual characterized by the inversion of the traditional Latin mass. They take this mass and parody it. Instead of our nomine patris et filii et spiritus sancti in atari dei, the black mass begins by invoking their father and God, Satan. And they say, in troibo ad altari domini inferi. They go down to the infernal, to their Lord down there in his altar. St. Thomas Aquinas teaches us that faith can be defined simply as cogitare cum ascensione, to think with assent. To think with God, to think with assent. You think as if you are already in heaven, so to speak. All through the Holy Mass, we strive to do just that. Think with assent. We strive to lift up our hearts and minds to God. We say, sur sum corda, in the preface. In the Black Mass, however, it's inverted. Those attending are to think with descent. We strive to go up, they strive to go down. We have our Father above, they have their Father below. And they make no bones about it. They tell you. Now in the third temptation of Christ, recall how the devil offered his majesty the whole world if he would bow down in worship. What was our Lord's response? Be gone, Satan. And the devil left him, says the scriptures. Now the, at the end of the black mass, not surprisingly, it's inverted. It says, welcome, Satan. Satan. In other words, the Black Mass gives the devil permissions to work in the lives of those who attend. It is opening doors into their lives in which to work. And if you're going to do it in a public forum, you're opening it to the public. To those who give themselves over to him, he's going to work in their lives. They've given him permission. Whereas in the true Mass, when understood and prayed well, it works to remove the permissions of the devil in our lives, to close the doors to evil, to crush the head of Satan. It's one of the ways the priest prays to get rid of Satan. I command you to go to the foot of the cross. Where do we find the foot of the cross? In the Mass. His head will be crushed. It is no wonder then that many famous people have turned to the Black Mass to get a favor, fame and money and power. Making the Black Mass a sort of representation of the third temptation of Christ. We've got the representation of Calvary. He's got the representation of the third temptation. According to some recent converts from Satanism, and there are converts, Many of these people sought out their help to get elected to office. To sell more movies 
and CDs or make big business deals. Make no mistake, many famous people have taken this route, including many Hollywood singers and actors and comedians. We can infer this in the life of Robin Williams, for example, who openly discussed this. He committed suicide some two years ago. He's just one example. Listen to his own words from an interview granted way back in 1999 to U.S. Weekly. Yeah, literally, it's like possession. All of a sudden, you're in. And because it's in front of a live audience, you get this energy that just starts going. And there's also that thing. It is possession. In the old days, you'd be burned for it. But there is something empowering about it. I mean, it is Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde where you really can become this other force. Where did he pick up these demons that possessed him? Did he attend a black mass? Did he have one said for his intention or for him? Now, such behavior has been reported of many rock and roll stars, popular singers, movie actors. They talk about how some force just takes over and they act with incredible alacrity. Whoa. They wanted the world. They bowed down to Satan and worshipped him and he gave them fame. It is no secret that many of them could not endure their dark master and ended up falling into the favorite temptation of the devil, despair, and they committed suicide. Do we really want our children to watch possessed people act? to listen to their songs, laugh at their jokes. This is what Hollywood is giving us now. I'm not joking around. This is serious. Another more serious example happened in Paris, France under the late 17th century King Louis the 14th, the so-called Sun King. He had sadly fallen in with the most ambitious and wicked mistress who later was discovered to have participated in something like three black masses, which had abortions at them, or infanticide. It was with a real Catholic priest, too. She did this in order to secure and expand her position as the king's favorite. She wanted to be queen. And amazingly, this woman did repent and do penance. We'll save that for another time. It's a very interesting story. Keep in mind that this is a very king whom St. Margaret Mary was told by the sacred heart of Jesus to have France consecrated to his most sacred heart. He failed. He failed to heed the warning and the offer of heaven. As a result, the French Revolution came about. Everybody agrees that knows anything that it would not have happened had this king obeyed. And when the French Revolution came about, there came with it an explosion of the occult that we're now experiencing in full bloom. It grew out of the very same revolution. Napoleon resurrected many things of Egypt, the home of the occult, and himself was an avid reader of palms. Josephine, his wife, consulted many occult sources for her information and guidance. She had a witch at hand oftentimes. Occult activity was become more and more commonplace ever since. Now it has reached the level of public black masses. Why is this happening? The devil wants consecration. He wants mankind to be his. He wants more permissions granted to raise hell to the surface of the earth that it will become his kingdom permanently. He wants to be king in place of Christ. If Christ would not bow down to him in the desert, he will make him bow down to him in the Eucharist. Give me one of those consecrated hosts. I'll make the Christ bow down to me. And he will make his mystical body, the church, do the same. God is allowing this to show us how far he has exceeded. Like sitting bull, they will continue to succeed and defeat the impure and arrogant custers that are trying to lead the opposition. We need a lives, holy and pure, 
and humble men. In light of this via negativa view of things, we can now see how good it is to be Catholic. Willy-nilly, the Satanists are pointing out that we are in the right place. That we have the real thing in the Holy Mass. And this is why it is being mocked. This also means that all their efforts will eventually backfire, as we have seen with St. Elias. 850 prophets against one. And they failed and they all died. But we need to do our part. We need to take the place of Elias. We need to seek to use the sacrifice of Christ in the Holy Mass. We need to use it properly to remove the permissions of the devil such that their efforts will come to naught. That their demons will be left in silence and powerless without any more permissions to do evil. Let us use the Mass well, and this can be done. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.